Three years ago, the former Wales lacrosse captain Storm Trentham paid a visit to Kenya for charity work, which turned out to be the beginning of a new and exciting sport in the country. The trained teacher, who resides in the United Kingdom, set up the lacrosse sport in a number of girls' secondary schools in Western Kenya. Okay, so back in 2007 I got involved with a sports charity based in Kenya, predominantly in Mumias, and we used to bring football and rugby to the schools um, in the West, and what I found was that there were loads of opportunities for the boys to play sport, but all the girls would, would just be watching and standing around, and you know, they would always be keen, they wanted to join in, but there was no opportunities for them. So as a ex-Welsh um, lacrosse international, I just thought that it was my role to bring the sport to Kenya and introduce the sport to the girls and give them uh, equal opportunities to the boys just to give them something to do you know, during their school days and to give them you know, something to work towards and just have fun really learning a new sport. When you brought the game, you know, how was the reception? Did people ask like, why should we take part in this uh, game that you know, people don't know about? No, actually it was the opposite. They were really keen. I think you know, when something new comes, everyone wants to get involved because they're desperate to know what it is. And um, so we've now got 10, 12 schools playing in Western Kenya, but there's a lot more that want to also get involved and play the sport because they hear um, about the sport from their neighboring schools who are playing. So now everyone else, it sort of has a domino effect and everyone else wants to play it as well, which is it's great for, you know, giving more girls more opportunities in the area. I came to learn this lacrosse game some time back when I was teaching at uh, Mumias in a school called St. Teresa's Bumini High School and uh, the principal by the name Robert Nabiswa. So he was one of those uh, teachers and principals that were supporting lacrosse. So I learned from there. So when I moved to Moizlans High School in Angili, I quickly moved to the game. That's how I came to learn the game. The lacrosse is the first time in Kwanza. Hey, ilikuwa ni mwaka wa 2015 kuna shule kule Mumiasi ambazo zilikuwa zinacheza na kulikuwa na mwalimu mkuu eh, mku ambaye alitoka kwa shule ya upili ya St Mary's akaenda Sulmeti halafu akakuja Mkumgals sasa yeye ndiye alikuwa mwalimu wa kwanza na nadhani kukaribisha huu mchezo eh, alikuwa anaitwa B Mary Stella Chitechi sasa alipokuja kwa shule ya upili Eh, aka tuita na akasema kwamba eh, anataka pia wasichana wake wacheze huu mchezo na hiyo nilikuwa mara ya kwanza tulipoenda eh, kule Buka Academy na tukaona vile mchezo ilikuwa inachezwa na wasichana wakafurahia sana eh, sasa hapo ndipo tulipoanza kucheza huu mchezo why why did you think of the girls only when you came because back then I only coached girls lacrosse and now it's a different story in the UK I coach men's lacrosse as well but back then as I said you know the boys already had their football and their rugby so I just wanted to give something to the girls to start with I was always going to try and develop it into the boys program as well but first and foremost I just wanted to introduce it to the girls and I never really set out for this to turn into a national team and try and get the girls to the World Championships next year. I just wanted to give you know, as many girls as I could an opportunity to play sport. But since 2015, that's slightly changed. The game, which was introduced in a number of girls' secondary schools, attracted lots of attention from students who quit other sports to join lacrosse. Uh, at 
say generally I love sports but uh, I got to lacrosse and I found it quite different from the others and uh, yeah cuz we use sticks I know hockey use sticks but I think I love lacrosse so more for which uh, game did you used to play uh, soccer and basketball so you said it from soccer to lacrosse how easy was the switch uh, it was not so easy cuz uh, you know it's a new game totally new and you are you don't have any experience at all so it was quite hard but we just use practice and practice till you get it. Nilianza kucheza lacrosse 2016 uh, na chenye kilinifurahisha kwa lacrosse ni different skills that we learn from them and the the fitness. Um I started playing lacrosse around 2015 because Storm it's a game the Storm introduced at my school so that's when I started playing that's how I was introduced. Yes, it has been friendly because I would say lacrosse is a friendly game and that's one thing I like about the game it brings people together so yeah it has been. Development is good girls are keeping uh, catching up very fast we have uh, people from the US who are coming up to support us very strongly they're bringing us equipment uniforms t-shirts so you find that most people are interested to join the game so the game is developing very fast. So you have Leolienda Walishtuka Sana Kosabu Lukoha kuona huo mchezo lakini vile walipoona wenzao wakicheza eh, pia waliweza kufurahia na reception ilikuwa nzuri kwa sababu kwa, eh, kwa sababu wakati huo tulikuwa na mwanzilishi pia alikuwa pale huyu Storm pia alikuwa amekuja na makochezo wengine kutoka Ulaya na kulikuwa na karibu wanafunzi karibu 100 The biggest challenge the game has faced has been the acquisition of the playing sticks. Um, there is a group playing in Nairobi and Makuru, so there's a group of girls playing there and there's actually a group of boys. And if all goes to plan, those boys will, um, we're really trying to get them to their Junior World Cup in 2020 over in Ireland. So we have two areas, you know, obviously we, can, we want to grow the sport as much as we can, but it's not easy, it's not like football rugby where there's you know, a number of coaches that could just come in and coach. Lacrosse is very unique. There's not very many um, Kenyans that know about the game, so it's really hard. At the moment, we're using co uh, players from Uganda to help coach us. Um, but if it was up, you know, if coaches weren't a barrier or equipment wasn't a barrier, because equipment's expensive. So it is quite an, a hard sport to um, spread rapidly. So we just have to try and spread it as manageably as we can. Talk about equipment. It's uh, it's not easy to find such equipment here in the country. Mm. How did you manage, you know, to bring such equipment to these uh, young ladies and uh, you know have them in those schools that they are in? So um, back in the UK, I was a teacher at a lacrosse playing school for six, seven years, and as I said, I was an international player and coach. So lots of my friends are my lacrosse friends, and lots of them are teachers at schools as well. So when I told them my idea to start lacrosse in Kenya and try and get the first African women's team to um, the World Championships, they all really got behind me and supported everything. So they have been great in donating kit, collecting all old sticks that their players have used and they, when they've moved on to buy new sticks. Um, so from the UK, we've been really lucky with support from schools and universities. And over in America, they have been hugely um, influential in getting equipment over. There's um, one of the best players in the world, well, she's now finished, but she's now one of the top coaches, is Jen Adams from Australia. And she's, I mean, she's donated over 100 brand new sticks. And as I said, these sticks are really expensive. So to get any second hand is, you know, is great, but to get brand new top of the range sticks is really, you know, we can't thank people like Jen and there's a few others that have been huge in getting um, the equipment over. If it wasn't for them, we wouldn't be able to play the sport. So we're really grateful. Yeah, first of all, uh, sister, this game now that is being sponsored by one lady by the name Storm Trentham, who has been uh, especially doing this each time she comes in August every year she comes with equipment she comes with a ball she comes with coaches she comes with coaches that are helping us to develop this game so for us to continue sustaining this particular game I believe there are some people that have been so essential and important to this thing I must mention their names one there's this uh, the Kenya National uh, Kenya Secondary Sports Association Deputy Secretary, that is Juan Quinto, who is currently the, uh, the Western Region Secretary for Sports. That guy has been very good. He has been trying to give us room whenever there are uh, secondary sports 
championship and games giving us time to showcase the game i think by virtue of trying to showcase the game other schools want to come in other schools feel like they should join the game so and by virtue of more schools trying to join in like for example kamsinga high school the bukumu is there nangili is there all these schools are there the sponsors when they come around they feel now they should be coming in with equipment you see and uh, we are also trying to do this serious publicity about the game because now it's new and our curriculum is trying to uh, it's trying to drift toward the talent oriented uh, way of doing things so we believe the ministry of education or the ministry of sports coming in this is going something that is going to be sustained with the help of external donors and especially now if equipments are there if the the kenya government and the sports uh, group the sports uh, ministry the education ministry comes in we're going to get most of these equipments free supposing these uh, donors these guys playing in the uk us donate the items once they land at the port it can be into the country duty free and believe when those items are duty free we are going to have a lot of equipment and we shall sustain you're saying that you actually do not think of uh, you know giving these girls an opportunity of getting into the national team and now you are at a position where next year kenya might be taking part in the world cup you know mm -hmm. how, how 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 does it feel you know when you look at back at the uh, three years down the line you are at a point where you know the sport has grown that kenya might actually take part in the world cup um first of all they will take take part in the World Cup. Um, obviously we've only got a year to go, it's, it's next year, 1st of August 2019. Um, as I said, I just wanted to really give as many girls as I could the opportunity to play sport, but in 2015 at the last Junior World Cup, I was um, head coach for the Welsh team, it was my second World Cup, and I knew after that World Cup I was going to step down from international coaching. But because I had started lacrosse here since 2009, I was still coaching out here, um, but not on the international scene. As I stepped down from Wales, it just made me realise that, you know, sport is such an important part in anyone's life. I think that there's a lot of transferable skills from the sports pitch to everyday life. And I just thought, you know, it's not every day you can be a part of international sport. And then when I d decided to see if I could get Kenya to the next World Championships, um, there was a slightly more to it. I just realised that we'd be the first African team to make it to the World Championships on the female stage. So Uganda played men's lacrosse and they've just come back from their second World Championships and they did really well in Israel, but there has as yet been no African female team at a World Championships. So how are the ladies in terms of talent when you look at them? The, the ladies that you have in camp right now, 20, you uh, brought mm -hmm. them, uh, the number was cut from 80 in the first uh, sure. camp. How, how, you know, what do you have to say about them when you talk about talent do you know what they're i'm so impressed with how they've been they're so receptive i see them a couple of times a year but even since the last time i saw them their skill level has just skyrocketed you know we're talking about a group of girls who are really disadvantaged they don't come from the best backgrounds you know many of them started lacrosse purely because they knew at squad weekends we would feed them and otherwise they wouldn't eat from friday to monday okay and lots of them they have to be in school to play lacrosse so it keeps them motivated to stay in school because they know it then gives them the opportunity to play this sport and i think you know the challenges that they have at home you know, it's, re it's really hard to hear what they're going through because it's, it's really upsetting. But it also, on the lacrosse pitch, it makes them more determined. You know, they're really gutsy and they're just willing to learn. All they want to do is improve. And they just pick things up really quickly. And I've been really impressed. You know, even from yesterday, having them training this morning, we start new drills, fresh drills, and they pick it up straight away because, you know, they're eager to learn and they concentrate and they, they really want to please the coaches. And they, at the end of the day, they want to make it into that top 18 to make it on the plane to Canada next year. Um, pretty far, considering the fact that we are planning to represent the country in the Under-19 Games World Cup next year. Um, that is going to be a booster for like Kenya to understand and know about the sport more. So I think it's, we're heading somewhere. Um, I see a lot of talent, I see a lot of passion in all of them. A lot, many of my teammates are really giving it 110%, as I can say. You can see the love inside of them for the game. Um, since I get that question a lot, why do you play it? And I tell them because I love the game. It's just because of the passion and the love that you have the game. That's what really pushes you and makes you play it on and on. It doesn't worry me because, yeah, it's a new sport that um, if you try it, you love it. This, the reason why we are playing it is because we want to tell the world that, hey, yeah, it's a new game in Kenya, in Africa. Come on, just give it a try. So I'm not kind of worried. 
Uganda is the only other country in the East and Central African region that plays lacrosse. The men's team took part in the recently concluded World Cup. The, the games are definitely good and it's, a, it's an opportunity for, for us who have started to play the game to go out there and get more experience. Uh, the play on the field wasn't really so good in terms of uh, the scoreboard, but uh, ironically the teams, uh, teams got better by, by the tournament. So, uh, how has the growth of lacrosse been in Uganda? Uh, the growth of the game right now is uh, is really impressive, uh, especially with the girls' game. The girls' game has uh, picked up faster than the, 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 the boys' game because of uh, of the difference in the equipment that is needed. Uh, for the girls, basically, you need a stick and, uh, and and you have people playing. And for the guys, you need uh, other equipment, protective equipment, gloves, elbow pads, maybe helmets. Uh, but also, it has uh, it has given us uh, a little bit of more creativity. So these days, we don't really capitalize on those other extra equipment. We think. Uh, the stick is the most important, so we get guys going even just with the stick. So, uh, not many teams play lacrosse in Africa. So, like, how do you guys, you know, gauge yourselves against other international teams? Uh, it's tough. We, we normally wait for the international games to to be able to play against different competition. Uh, but for us back home, we have had a league of uh, four teams. Uh, we keep playing against each other. Then we use the opportunities of uh, visiting volunteers and the coaches to teach more about the game. And then also we, we really rely on, on each other. Other than that, we rely on, uh, on, on the internet, whether it is YouTube, whether it is just uh, uh, a writing, a blog, and that, and that really helps a lot. So finally, do you see, you know, in, in, in the next World Cup, do you see better performances from Uganda? Uh, I, I, in the next World Cup, I definitely see uh, a better improvement in, uh, in both, the, in all the teams that will go there because they, we go there as different teams. They, we use the previous uh, competitions as a, as a learning experience and try to add more onto the team. But also, interestingly, for, for us, Uganda back home, we got, uh, we got a permanent uh, coach. So, which is really important, and he has a, a long-term plan on the growth. So, which we are waiting for to to kick off, and I and I think we'll uh, will be a better team when we get back. With no federation set up to manage the game in the country yet, Storm is working towards introducing the game to other parts of the country. Our goal is obviously to get to World Championships next year, and you know that's going to be huge. There's a lot of challenges that we've got to overcome along the way, but also, you know, there's so many great things um, that we are a part of in order to make it um, to make it there but after the world championships you know we need this sport to be sustainable we need to keep it going we need to make sure that we still have all the schools participating you know even after the world cup so we need to put on you know tournaments and competitions year in year out in Kenya invite Uganda over and South Africa are starting Rwanda so that all the girls and you know boys as I say are motivated to keep going every year and then, you know, every four years there's going to be a World Cup. But, you know, apart from the international side of things, I just want as many um, Kenyan boys and girls to be playing the sport. You know, if it means they're part of our program and it means they have to stay in school, therefore they get their education. If it means that, you know, they get fed when they wouldn't necessarily get fed, then, you know, for me, that's almost as important as what they do on the pitch. Um, you know, as I said, our girls are really challenged, some of them, you know, really harsh backgrounds and there's a lot of, you know, Kenya's quite a male dominating country and what we've found, well, what the girls have, you know, said to us, since they've been playing the sport, they get a lot more respect from the men in their village, they get less hassle, you know, some of our girls have, you know, got emotionally and physically abused and now, I am not saying it's stopped, but there's far less of it. So as I said, if lacrosse can be a vehicle to better their lives and give them hope and opportunity, then you know that's what I would take first and foremost. The reason as to why I was talking about uh, roping in the Ministry of Education, the Ministry of Sports, once the Ministry of Education is in the picture, it is allowed in Kenya, we shall end up having, and that is our biggest prayer, we are going to have this game in the Kenya Secondary Sports Association calendar. Once it is in the calendar, automatically, these girls will be, these girls and boys will be playing the same in high school. Once it is in the system, it will automatically drop into the colleges. Once it goes to the colleges, automatically we shall have clubs. Yeah, like you see, rugby is in high school. From the uh, high school, you go to play rugby in university. From university, you get a club. Same to other sports. So our biggest prayer is one: if the Ministry of Education captures this thing, it puts in our um, Kenya Sports Secondary Association calendar. 
the game will be sustained. Those girls playing at the moment in Form 2, Form 1 will have something to do. And remember this, this game, once we continue developing it, there are very many scholarships that, that are going to come out. We shall have girls going outside to play because like Storm has got very many colleges, very many connections that our girls can have and end up getting scholarship. And as we are speaking today, there are some girls who are getting full scholarship in high school. Fix is being paid. Like uh, if you talk to, if you ask Mr. Makoha, that is from Sacred Heart Mukumu High School, he will tell you from uh, Maraba, there's a school called Maraba, there's a girl who is totally being sponsored just because of playing this lacrosse. Meaning if this, this, this game or this sport is taken seriously, girls are going to win. When the game began, we were told that because uh, boys tend to be, be too rough, then the equipment would not be able to uh, be enough for boys and girls. They first introduced the girls, then after the game has picked, they introduced to the boys. So the challenge is equipment because this game is being sponsored. We don't contribute anything. So that is the challenge. Equipment are not enough for both boys and girls. The future is this, uh, this game, we are going far as a, as a Kenya lacrosse. Yeah, because the way we've seen things work, the support we get, because even uh, Kakamega County, we have people supporting us. We went to Uganda the other time, we had Ministry of Education with us in Uganda. So the future of lacrosse is, we have a good future. Yeah, well, okay, especially in the Western region, uh, we, have so, uh, we have shown some exhibition matches uh, at the Kakamega County and also during the regional competition. And there's a lot of pressure because many schools, they want to join. But the big challenge is that uh, the facilities that we have, you know, all these sticks and balls that are imported, they come from UK. We don't have them being manufactured here in Kenya. But there is a lot of pressure because uh, many schools want to join, especially the girls' school and also some boys' school, they also show interest. But now you find that uh, the kind of a city that are used with the girls are not the same as those ones be used by boys. Uh, this is, uh, I think there's a school by the name of French School Kamsinga. Uh, they are doing it, but uh, I think they don't have enough facilities, but I think it's the only boys school that is playing. But for the girls, the game is spreading uh, very rapidly. Okay, in fact, we have also some two primary schools that are doing it. We have Hekima Academy in Butla and Hekima, uh, 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 Hekima Academy, they are getting their facilities are from USA. As I say, we just need more equipment coming in. So once the girls get to Form 4, get to 19, and they're out of the under-19 bracket, we hope to start setting up um, at least a club in our two regions, in Mumias and in Nairobi, to keep them playing. You know, if all goes to plan, we need to get them to the Senior World Championships in 2023 in Towson in America. So we don't want it to be a case of you know, they finish school, they get to 19, and they can't play lacrosse anymore. As you say, we need to keep it sustainable. You know, girls, young adults, everyone needs sport in their lives. Everyone needs, um, you know, something to work towards to stay fit, to stay healthy. People do it for different reasons. And if they want to do it to get to the next Senior World Championships, amazing. If they want to do it just because it's fun and, you know, they meet new people and it just gives them something better or different to do, then, you know, that's what we need to do. And uh, finally, uh, let's talk about the international competitions. In Africa, you say that we have Uganda, mm -hmm. which uh, the men's team was in the World Cup. Yeah. Now you're looking at Kenya taking part in the World Cup. Yeah. You have South Africa coming through. Uh, what are the prospects you know of Africa having uh, you know a number of African teams taking part in this? Well, you know, that's very much what we're looking at. Um, the International Federation of Lacrosse, they need to see the sport growing in every continent. And Africa, we're the last continent to um, be playing the sport. And in order for it to make the Olympics in LA 2028, it's, well, there's a number of criteria, but one of the main ones is it's got to be played in um, every continent and by both male and uh, female teams. So as I said, Uganda ticked the men's box and we hope to tick the women's box. So we need to see the sport growing in Africa, you know, to um, give us more competition because you know the players over in America and in Europe they they've been playing since they're really young they play all through school you know a couple of hours a day so we're already starting on the back foot so we need as much competition in Africa as we can and uh, the International Federation you know are doing a really good job to develop the sport in this continent um, but you know as I said it's hard it's expensive and we need to try and get as many Western coaches to Kenya to Uganda to you know Rwanda South Africa all those teams that are developing it to give their experience and their knowledge 
to not only the players but the coaches and the individuals on the ground so they can teach the game when you know we're not in the country. Competition is tough because me, me personally, I started playing, uh, I think, a half a year ago. Then, like, you find people who have played four years now. So, I, the competition is quite tough, yeah, because you have to be better than them or just, just like them, yeah. My goal is to be a good player and help others learn it, let lacrosse spread in Kenya and be just as popular as football or basketball or, yeah yet to be there, we're not yet there actually, because I'd say we are not that good as uh, as other teams in like the world. Most of the teams are good at their stick work, they don't do any blunders yet, we still have quite some blunders, but I think in some months time we'll be fine, we'll be okay. Orange. Uh, tofauti and kuna iyo tofauti skills zinyi tuna learn from it from other sports alafu the fun that is in lacrosse it's more enjoyable than the others the what i see uh, i think lacrosse can take part and then uh, i think lacrosse gonna be the best because it's somehow new and you can learn more things from it. Um, let me tell you one thing about lacrosse. You cannot stagnate. Personally, um, you can train yourself. You don't have the coach doesn't have to be there for you to actually train. Just get a wall and train yourself. Um, despite that Storm is not here throughout the year or throughout the time, she sends greetings. We have coaches like Oscar is there going to um, in and out of schools, making sure that the lacrosse players are keeping fit. So, um, Storm not being here throughout the year is not a problem. <laughs> <laughs>